Articular cartilage paste grafting is performed for full thickness cartilage lesions in the knee. It is appropriate for both chondral lesions as well as arthritic knees. Here, the full thickness trochlear lesion is probed, flaps of articular cartilage identified, and the extent of the lesion fully understood. A biter is brought into place in order to trim the flaps back to a stable base. A shaver is used to complete the debridement of both the free flaps of cartilage as well as the calcified bone in the ebernated area of exposed bone. And all is brought into place and the bone morselized, which is a more extensive procedure than a microfracture alone. The goal here is to create full bloody bed with complete disruption of the subchondral plate and complete removal of calcified or cystic bone that may be present. Sometimes, when performing this procedure, a subchondral cyst is encountered. It's important to try to remove that cyst and to bloody the complete base of the lesion. This is especially true in OCD lesions or lesions that have previously been treated with other forms of cartilage replacement. To harvest the bone and cartilage required for paste grafting, a trephine is brought through the anterior medial portal into the intercondylar notch. The 8 millimeter trephine is then used to harvest a 15 millimeter deep core of articular cartilage and underlying bone. We have demonstrated in laboratory studies with Tony Radcliffe that this cartilage and underlying bone has stem cells that will follow a chondrogenic pathway when stimulated. The bone and cartilage plug is passed into an ENT bone compressing unit made by Richards. It is a bone compactor that permits smashing the bone into a paste. Multiple cores can be obtained from the intercondylar notch if necessary. This clearly depends on the size of the lesion to be grafted. The cores are placed into a bone graft smasher, which is then impacted on the back table with a mallet. The graft is smashed until it forms into a paste. Excess soft tissue is removed with the scissors and the paste is cut up into small pieces and impacted again. Efforts to add fibrin glue, cellulose, or other adhesion factors to this paste have not been successful in that they have created a bone plug. Once the paste has been formed, it is reinserted into the trephine. The trephine is then brought back into the knee, into the prepared lesion, and the graft is impacted into the base of the lesion. No effort is made to completely fill the lesion, as all of these cartilage lesions hypertrophy when treated in this fashion. Frequent question is, doesn't some of the graft fall off into the knee? Yes, some of it does. However, a loose body has not been encountered in more than 15 years of performing these paste graft procedures. Once the base of the lesion is covered with the paste graft, the procedure is completed. We have been able to perform paste grafting for small and large defects, including very large OCD defects that were previously filled with allograft or bone plugs or other devices that failed. All that is necessary is for the paste graft to remain in the small holes created by the morselization technique and for those cells to see the joint fluid and joint environment. When motion is applied by a CPM machine, those cells are stimulated to form cartilage rather than bone. At the end of the procedure, the water pump can be let down and bleeding confirmed from the prepared lesion. It is the bleeding and blood clot that subsequently forms that keeps the graft in place. A mixture of hyaline cartilage repair tissue and fiber cartilage usually characterizes the repaired lesions in isolated chondral defects as well as arthritic knees. This repair tissue has been successful at providing pain relief for more than 15 years in our athletic patient population. The post-operative rehabilitation program for pace grafting depends on the location of the lesion. Trochlear lesions can be treated in a full extension brace with full weight bearing and CPM use for four weeks, six hours a night. Femoral condylar lesions or tibial plateau lesions require non-weight bearing with a flex knee brace for four weeks, 
in use of CPM for six hours per night. All patients are started on a total body conditioning program on day one postoperatively, as well as physical therapy with manual therapy to regain knee range of motion and to decrease effusion. Full unrestricted weight bearing is permitted after four weeks. Impact sports are discouraged for the first four months. However, cycling and swimming are strongly encouraged. Patients notice that their knee symptoms from large cartilage defects or arthritic knees treated with pace grafting tend to improve over the first three to four years. The first year is characterized by some immediate improvement followed by an up and down course depending on their activity level with general improvement that is very noticeable over the course of the first year. Additions to the post-operative program include the use of 1500 milligrams of glucosamine each day usually in the form of joint juice, a beverage that holds a full day's dose. Hyaluronic acid or visco supplementation can be added after four months and often is a good addition on an annual basis if the knees are symptomatic. It should be noted that in our first two to 12 year follow-up study, more than 85% of the first 125 patients treated with articular cartilage pace grafting for arthritic knees had at least one grade of improvement in pain and function.